Hello everybody, how is it going? I am Lucas and I want to have a little bit of a conversation about the Studio One for CPU meter. CPU meter can be a giant pain in the butt to a lot of people because if it's constantly pegged out when you're playing your mixes and you're trying to listen back to stuff, it can get very aggravating. Recently, I kind of made a very interesting discovery about it and I kind of want to talk about it a little bit. The rig that I was running for the past three years was the Intel 6600K CPU and I was running 16 gigabytes of G-Skill RAM at 2666 speed. I sometimes when I would play Studio One when I would have a, like a you know session loaded up with Contact, for example, my CPU meter would be jumping all over the place. Sometimes it would peg out, I would get pops, I would get cracks stuff like that, but most of the time it was fine. I thought it was because my CPU, which 6600K only has four cores and four threads, it came out in 2005, I thought it was because it was a little bit older and it was a little bit slow. So whenever the Ryzen 3000 chips came out, I really wanted to upgrade, I changed out all my stuff. In the middle of changing out everything, I needed to have a first generation Ryzen chip to flash new BIOS so I could actually use the 3000 CPUs. I know it's, that's kind of a lot of information, but it's relevant. Whatever I had the BIOS flash and everything, I was waiting for my, three, my new 3000 chip to come in. I had an issue with my board to where I couldn't necessarily run the 16 gigabytes of RAM that I had before because I had two of my DIMM slots are messed up. So I booted up Studio One 3, excuse me, Studio One 4, I'm living in the past. I booted up Studio One 4 with those eight gigabytes of RAM, and lo and behold, my CPU meter was absolutely slammed at 100% as soon as my big session was open. And I'm like, okay, this is very interesting. I'm running on less RAM. And when I opened up my um, task manager, my CPU usage was only at like 20%, and that was with Studio One 4 open and my Brave browser that I use that was open. And this kind of was very interesting to me because I always thought that the CPU meter was purely based off of the actual CPU itself. I didn't know that it also encompassed RAM in there, which it kind of makes sense, but it, it, it's very interesting that my CPU, which is the first generation Ryzen, which is about two years old or so, wasn't under a full load, but the CPU meter in Studio One 4 was completely maxed out. So I returned that bad board, I got my new board in, I put the new RAM that I bought, it's 16 gigabytes of RAM, but this RAM is running at 3200 as opposed to the 266 on my old Intel system. So long story short, got a new board, updated the BIOS again, I'm running the new RAM in dual channel mode with the new Ryzen 3700X CPU. That's what I'm currently running right now. Now, when I open up that same exact session, right? Okay, 3700X CPU that has eight cores, 16 threads, and I'm running 16 gigabytes of ballistic RAM at 3200, right? My CPU meter now doesn't go past 40. It very rarely goes past 50, which is very interesting now. So what it seems is that the CPU meter in Studio One 4, this is just my initial findings. If I'm wrong here, please correct me in the comments down below because I'm trying to figure out all what encompasses the actual CPU meter. It seems that the CPU meter is a combination of obviously the RAM that you have running and your actual CPU of your computer itself. So the CPU meter itself isn't indicative of the actual CPU you have in your computer. And it isn't indicative of how much load is under that CPU. What it seems to be is the CPU meter is the actual DSP CPU engine of Studio One 4 itself and how well it's handling things with the resources it has as it's disposable. When I was running 32-bit Studio One 3 back in the day, I noticed that when you're running a 32-bit program, it doesn't have access to a lot of RAM. It caps out at about eight gigabytes or so, I believe. Studio One 3 was absolutely pegged. So I switched and I installed the 64-bit of it and it was a lot better because I had more access to RAM. So my CPU meter went way down in Studio One 3. And then that brings us to today. If you want to run Studio One 4 without having your CPU meter go off, it seems that the RAM amount and more or less the RAM speed is what is very important. Now what I mean by RAM speed is Whenever you buy different types of RAM, they run at different speeds. They can run at 266, 2666 like I said before, or they can run 
at around 3000 MT and that's kind of like the of how fast it does stuff. So it seems that Studio One 4 likes really fast RAM. The amount, it seems to absolutely be fine at 16. The track that I'm running is a song that was on my EP and I'm doing a review out of that track and like I said it's running contact I have a lot of plugins in there I have a lot of tracks it's not super super plugin intensive but I do have a lot of tracks in there and with my new system I do not go past 40 and it's absolutely fantastic so it seems that the CPU meter in studio one it likes about 16 gigabytes of RAM but it seems that the speed is a little bit more important necessarily for the actual amount because like I said now with 16 gigabytes of RAM I'm absolutely fine and that's what my browser open and studio one four open and I can even open like my video editor if I'm doing that and it's fine it the CPU meter in studio one four doesn't freak out and I can actually play things and it's actually fine. Long story short, if you're still here, still listen to me ramble, I really appreciate it. The breakdown that I have noticed is that Studio One 4 likes really fast RAM, about 16 gigabytes is the minimum that you would have. I wouldn't even go below 16, because like I said, when I was on eight, it was absolutely pegged. If you have a pretty normal sized session that you're using a couple of virtual instruments in. And when it comes to processors, I would not, go anything below a four core processor the more the merrier when it comes to cores and definitely make sure you have a lot of threads in your cpu i would not go below eight so the minimum for me i mean i know there's specifications that you can look on for studio one for what it would exactly work but the specifications that they give you versus to an actual real world result doesn't exactly match up most of the time I would definitely go with something with four cores and eight threads minimum. If you can get an eight core processor, definitely get that. Cause like I said, my 3700X has eight cores and 16 threads. Even if you were to get a, for example, a Ryzen 3600 CPU, which it's in the same family as the one I have, it's just two processors down. I have a feeling that would run absolutely fine too with Studio One. And if, if you want to look for something like Intel wise, probably I would go with an i7, I think it's the 8600, is the, the one that's two generations after the 6600 that I ran, the 6600K. I wouldn't even stay on the i5. I would just, just make the jump to the i7 because I believe the i7 gives you a little bit more performance and they give you a little bit more threads. Or even the 7700K, that's, that is where I would absolutely draw the line when it comes to if you're getting a new processor, for example. Now, if you're running on older stuff and you are running into those CPU issues, you know, you can bust things down. You can reduce the amount of plugins that you're using to try and get your CPU meter down in Studio One 4. Now, everything I did was on a Windows 10 64-bit system. I do not know how it works on a Mac. I don't know if it works better. I don't know if it works worse. I'm just telling you what I went through on my Windows system. So to wrap things up, it seems that the CPU meter in Studio One 4 isn't really indicative of the actual CPU usage on your actual computer itself. It seems to be the actual CPU engine of Studio One 4. Now, if you have any more insight into this, please let me know in the comments down below. Like for example, I don't know how many cores and threads Studio One 4 can effectively use. I don't exactly know how it's coded. I also don't know exactly how it interacts when it comes to the RAM because when I was looking in my task manager, Studio One 4 is only really using about two gigabytes of RAM, which for a program like that, that's not really a lot. I mean, Chrome eats up way more RAM than that, depending on how many tabs and stuff you have open. It's very funny that when I was running on those eight gigabytes of RAM, it's as soon as it, it grabbed those two gigabytes, it was effectively pegged out. I guess because it didn't have any more RAM that it could grab, meaning that I had my browser open. And, and I also don't exactly know what the multi-core type of support is for Studio One 4. I don't exactly know what it utilizes. So if you know that, please let me know in the comments down below but I am very satisfied with my Ryzen 3700X. It's so nice to finally play a session and finally have that CPU meter nice and tame. So let me know your experiences with the Studio One 4 CPU meter, or if you use another DAW, 
and you've had similar experiences with it. So the whole notion of, oh, you need more CPU power, you need to save CPU power when you're using a DAW isn't 100% accurate. Like we've been hearing all these years. Yes, you do need to do it, but it seems that the CPU itself isn't getting a you know, maxed out all the way. It seems that the engine itself inside the DAWs aren't necessarily coded correctly. I don't say correctly, but they're not fully taking advantage of all the cores and threads that are in the CPUs of today. So let me know your experiences that you've had with it running, um, you know, more than 16 gigabytes of RAM, running different RAM speeds, the different things and experiences you've had on, you know, different types of processors. Let me know in the comments down below. But as for me, you're gonna have to be out. Peace. Hey.